In this lesson, I would like to pay tribute to what I consider one of the greatest composers of all time, Frederick Chopin. He was born in Poland in 1810, only lived to be 39 years old, died in 1849, so he's kind of like the Jim Morrison or the uh, Kurt Cobain, Jimi Hendrix of classical music. Um, he stood on the shoulders of his heroes, Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, and Schubert, and I think he kind of took what they had started with these new innovations and took it to a whole new level. He kind of um, ushered in the Romantic movement in the fine arts in the early mid 18th, sorry, 19th century, which was really kind of started by Beethoven. And he wrote some very rather brilliant pieces of music, mostly for a solo piano, a couple of other pieces, but they all had piano in them, the concertos and whatnot. And I came up with a really cool two guitar arrangement of a piece called Prelude in E Minor. I think it's Opus 28, number four is the full title of it. Chopin's Prelude in E Minor. And I have arranged it for two guitars. One guitar is going to play the left hand part, which is just chords. It's three note chord voicings that descend in a very interesting and innovative way for, for the time, for it was like 1830 something when he wrote it, um, or 1840 something. And the melody is very simple and sparse. And it sounds like nothing by itself, but when you put it against the chords, it sounds kind of compelling and profound. And what I'll do is I'll play them separately and then we'll put them together and I'll break it down. And uh, you want to use a clean tone. Um, as I was experimenting before doing this, I did a little pre-production demo and I recorded it. I'm trying to think, okay, how can I sound like a classical piano? And I tried neck pickup. I'm like, no, actually the bridge pickup on a clean setting sounds most like a classical piano. Played with a very, very light touch. Roll the tone off a little bit. And um, it's very expressive. The piece is meant to be played very slowly, very expressively, and uh, rubato, which is the Italian term meaning to rob the time so as to pay it back, meaning you're, you're playing along with a metronome and you're going to like lag behind a little bit for dramatic effect and then catch up. You know, so um, here it is. Check it out. Okay, that was the first half of the piece. I forgot to mention, it's a 24-bar piece, not that long. So it's like two 12-bar sections, and that's like the A section. And then um, next lesson, I will show you the A prime section, because it's kind of like a repetition of the A section, but it quickly veers off into new harmonic territory. So let me show you the melody first. It's super simple. You know, I just played it really softly with the pick. And I put a little bit of vibrato on there on every held note, you know, every opportunity I get. That's something a piano can't do, right? So you're injecting a little bit of a vocal quality. Just playing it real straight, you know? No uh, rakes or sweeps or like whammy bar dips, right? <laughs> I mean, you could do that. You could, uh, you know, sweep into each note and uh, play it with raging distortion. Or you could play it straight like this. A little hammer on. little um, finger slide. It's another expressive device. Something you can't do on a piano. And here's a little, that's a, a grace note. Um, I forgot to mention, I did mention, uh, Chopin was born in Poland, spent most of his life in Paris, but he was very fond of the, um, the quaint peasant folk music of his upbringing in Poland. And that uh, music is characterized by a lot of quirky little melodic decorations, a lot of grace notes and trills. So you'll find a lot of Chopin piano music a lot of these like clank, clank, clank notes on the keyboard. So he had it in here. And then. And that's the beginning of the second half of the piece. I'm going to stop it here. I'll show you that in the next one. Sorry, that's all I could fit on, on one page. 
But um, what makes that melody sound so profound, as I mentioned earlier, is the chords over which it is heard. So we start off with the E minor over G. And this part I chose to play finger style. I wanted to get a nice, even, pianistic note attack, right? If you strum, if we were to strum the notes. Bleh, 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 right? You're getting that. It's a quick arpeggiation, no matter how fast. You know, when you strum, if you slow that down digitally, you're going to hear it going do do right? So by, you can either hybrid pick it, but then you're going to get the bass note. It's going to be louder because you're picking it. So I figured finger picking is good here. Get that. And real soft. Okay, that's an E minor chord. And then it goes to. I'm hearing that as B7 sus4 over F sharp, resolving to B7 over F sharp. You could look at that as F sharp minor 7. And then it kind of morphs down to F7 to F6, F minor 6. See, the whole thing is gradually descending. E minor 7, E minor 6, C over E, A minor 6 over E. Stays in that for a minute. D diminished seven. See, so it's taking turns. One note is dropping at a time, right? Then a D minor seven. So it's like you have notes that are held over or what are called suspended. A minor over A minor add nine over C, resolving to A minor over C. And then B7 sus4, resolving to B7. Back to A minor over C. B7, A minor over C. That's pretty neat. I mean, this was really ahead of its time. Chopin was using what I, in the jazz um, mindset, you might think of as tension tones. Over that B7 chord, he's going, uh, that's like going B7 sharp five or B7 flat 13. And then flat nine. These were new sounds in you know, an 1840, right? And then, and then B7 sharp nine, B7 flat nine, resolving to E minor, you know? Very cool. But these chords, yeah, I had arranged them all on the, the A, D, and G strings. And uh, again, I mentioned that the notes, the way two notes stay the same and then one note drops, that's a classic example of what are called suspension. So when you hear of a suspended chord, say, you know, you hear B sus4. In classical music, what that comes from is that note was there from the previous chord. So say if I'm going, I'm in the key of G, I'm going, and I'm going, and then, you know, that was left over from the G. And then you can go, And that's the suspension. The D major seventh is the leftover note from the D chord. Sorry, sidetrack there. But um, yeah, this is kind of fun. The way I recorded this, I did it with a click, and then I muted the click. So it sounds like two guitars. And if you go on YouTube and you listen to um, classical pianists, just type in Chopin Prelude in E minor, Opus 28, number four, and you'll see like a dozen world class pianists playing it. Tons of reverb, clean tone. Use a really light touch because um, the word piano actually means softly. So the piece, it starts up at the piano dynamic level. A couple spots, it swells a little bit. And then at the end there, a little bit louder. And then when it starts off the second half, it gets real quiet again. So the softer you can make the soft parts, the more dramatic the contrast, dynamic contrast. Remember classical music, they don't use any compression, they don't use any noise gating, right? They didn't have any of that back in the day. It's like you had to play pianissimo or pianississimo, which is like barely whispering. And forte, fortissimo, fortississimo, which is like as loud as you can possibly play. So I will show you the next part in the next segment. And um, in the meantime, work on this one because the next one gets even cooler and a little more involved.